a very special dish. It's called the Royal Lion's Head. This recipe was created through blood and sweat. I hope that through this dish, I can show you that Chinese food is not just about MSG and fortune cookies. There's Kung Fu in there, okay? We're ready for our next step that's called Shuai Zhou. What does that mean? It means slapping the meat. You, you slap it like you mean it and flip it in. Put it carefully into this pot. Mmm. Mmm. Oh. So flavorful. I tell you, this is so worth every bit of your effort. show you today is a very special dish. It's called the Royal Lion's Head. This recipe was created through blood and sweat. My mom is a perfectionist and when she decided to make this dish, it has to be the best of the best. So she really spent 30 days to study this dish. Every day she's chopping meat, but, 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 but just like those monks praying in the temple using those temple blocks. Finally one day, no more chopping sound. This recipe has been created. The royal lion's head. I hope that through this dish, I can show you that Chinese food is not just about MSG and fortune cookies. There's Kung Fu in there, okay? Now, allow me to show you the royal lion's head. What we're gonna need today is ground pork, napa cabbage, Chinese rice wine, Chinese Shaoxing rice wine, sesame oil, soy sauce, white pepper, cornstarch, salt, green onions, ginger, some water, and the secret ingredient is the Chinese yam. First Kung Fu I'm gonna show you is about these ground pork. The number one pebble is you have to custom order ground pork with about 30% fat. And the second pebble is I asked my butcher to run my ground pork through the biggest hole of the plate once. That gives me these bigger chunk. Because the meat can get heavy and sticky after you chop them, you wanna do it in batches. I'm gonna do it in like two or three batches. Now do you wanna see how it really is done by my mom? Here comes the Kung Fu. And I wanna show you why we chop these. This becomes much stickier. And this will make them stick together instead of like individual ground meat. You're probably gonna ask, why don't we just grind it really fine? No matter how much you grind it, it's not gonna look like this. They're not gonna unite. And you will not get this soft and melt in your mouth texture. And if you get the already ground a really fine one and then chop, you will make it too fine. Too. So when you're eating it, you don't have that meaty texture either. You just gotta do the Kung Fu thing. The second pebble I wanna show you is ginger and green onion infused water. I'm gonna chop the ginger, chop the green onion into some big chunk and I'm gonna put it into a blender and just blend it with water. Now we're gonna chop some green onion into big chunk. And ginger. Now we're gonna chop it into chunks. You don't need to chop it too fine. The whole purpose is to speed up the process for them to release the yummy juice. Now we're done. I'm just gonna pour it in to the bowl and filter the ginger and green onion out. This next secret ingredient is something my mom searched and searched and searched for a month to find out this is the best one. This Chinese yam thing, this root vegetable, it does 
the best job. So now we just need a little bit because it's very powerful. When you put too much, your meatball are gonna fall apart. This is how much we need. And you peel it. Just give it a rough chop, and then we're gonna put it into the blender too. Now we're gonna blend it, puree it, until it's all smooth, no chunks. If you still see a little chunk in there, just pick it out, it's easy. Now we're gonna move on to mixing the ground pork. This is the easiest part. We're just gonna put everything together into the ground pork and then mix it up. First thing, the Kung Fu chopped pork into the mixer bowl. Just everything in, the ginger, green onion, infused water, this amazing secret ingredient, the Chinese yam, Chinese rice wine, Shaoxing wine, soy sauce, sesame oil, some white pepper, a little bit cornstarch, a little bit salt, just kick up another notch, which is not adding a whole egg. This is totally optional though. Because there's so much liquid in there, so you want to start low so it doesn't splash around. Now that you can see there's no excess liquid outside of the pork, it's time to turn up the speed. Now that everything is incorporated really well, we're ready for our next step. That's called shuai zhou. What does that mean? It means slapping the meat. Yeah, so let's clear out this space for us to be able to slap that meat. Why do we slap that meat? Because mama like it. All right, I'll tell you why. Because we've been doing so much to try to make sure this meatball is super tender and soft. Now this is when we slap it so it has this bouncy texture. So when you're eating it, it's not just kind of falling apart in your, in your mouth, but you also have that meaty texture. Grab a handful and slap it. And people, when you're at home slapping your meat, you slap it like you mean it, okay? Don't just, uh, okay? You, you slap it like you mean it. And you wanna give it a good 20 slaps. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna form the meatball, fry it, and then put it into this broth that we make to cook it halfway through. And then after that, we're gonna cook it with Nava cabbage and complete the whole dish. First thing first, we're gonna heat up the oil and we're gonna prepare some oyster sauce in a pot of water, which I didn't mention at the beginning that we need oyster sauce because if you're a true fan, you know by now. Let's put it in. Give it a good stir. So we wanna bring this to boil and we're gonna heat up the oil to about 325 degrees and then we're gonna fry the ball. While we're waiting, we can start forming the ball. What we need to do now is to form the meatball. We need a little cornstarch water to help us shape it because the meat right now is very sticky. With this cornstarch water, it will kind of make it smoother and easier to do. So we're gonna add in some water. And just get your hands in there. You're gonna get your hands in there and dirty anyways. Mix it. And you just pick up about one cup of ground pork. It takes skill to make big lion head, okay? The oil's ready, and this is the part that you wanna be really careful. Because this is so soft, you wanna be as close as to the oil surface as possible, and then flip it in. Once you put it in, don't touch it for a good minute because it's so soft right now you touch it you risk it to you know break the meatball and then you're gonna damage the whole oil after about a minute you just want to gently gently touch it the bottom so it doesn't stick 
Now that you know it's not sticking, just leave it for two more minutes. Now we're ready to flip it. Please try to just do one blow at a time. Now, the moment. Look at how beautiful this is. We just want to make sure they have their colored beautifully. See, this shape is a lot harder now. Now we're going to put it carefully into this pot. We're going to close this lid and let it simmer inside while we're making the other balls. These meatballs have been fried and be cooking in this broth for 20 minutes now. And they're ready because they're not all the way done yet. There's only halfway done. We're gonna finish these meatballs with the Naha cabbage. What you do with the Naha cabbage is you cut the tail off and they're gonna open up. Most of the veggies in Chinese cooking, we want to make sure they're crunchy, they're not overcooked, but this dish this has to be super soft. So you want to make sure they're big and long. So about like the, the outside, the outer side, this big leaf, half, and then quarter. This is a good size. And as you open up the Napa cabbage, the leaf gets smaller and smaller. So you will have those tiny little yellow, these yellow ones that are small enough that you probably don't even need to cut them. You can just use them as it is. Now we're just gonna cut them and then we're gonna wash them. Now the rest of them, I'm just gonna leave as what they are, how they are, because that's perfect size for us. You can't fit all of them inside the pot. So you can only fit probably half of it. So we saute it. That way we can let the veggie, the juice comes out. The veggie juice won't dilute our meat broth. That way you can control how much veggie you wanna put in and you can also control the flavor. Let's just heat up the wok, add some oil. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna saute some of the green onion and ginger slice, you want them to be big chunk because I'm gonna just infuse this oil with the flavor and then I'm gonna take them out. Now the oil is hot, we're just gonna pop it right in. It doesn't take long, just maybe a minute is enough. I like to poke it when they're in the wok just to help release more juice. Okay, now I think it's enough. And now, we're gonna put in the Napa cabbage. When you put it in, you're gonna be overwhelmed because you're like, oh, this is way more than what my wok can contain. But it will shrink down. In about halfway, I will add in some salt to help it sweat faster. Now, it's done. You don't want it to be too overcooked. As long as you see that they're cooked and then they still have this crunchy texture, that means it's ready for the assembling. Now we're ready to assemble. This is the modern design Chinese clay pot. So beautiful, it's called the nest. And we're gonna put veggie underneath and then we're gonna put the meatball on top. Now, how do you put it in? Most people just dump it in, but not Cha Cha, not in Cha Cha's kingdom. Everything has to look super fancy afterwards. We put these white parts underneath because the beautiful leafy part has to be floating on top. So we're gonna pick every single one of them like a beauty pageant. Now the white parts and the second layer is the leafy but the green leafy part. And you wanna lay them like a nest so the center is lower and then the outside is higher so the meatball can sit in there nicely. Now it's all ready. We're gonna move on to the meatball and then we're in the very end, we're gonna put in the precious yellow leafy part. We're just gonna take one of this beautiful 
royal lion's head. Now we're on to our last meatball. Now the last part, the yellow leafy part that sits around and in between the meatball, make them look golden royal lion head. So pretty. All right, we're done. Look how pretty this is. And now we're gonna put in these meat broth that we cooked our meatball in. You don't wanna put all of them in, just a few scoops. And then we're gonna add in a little bit of water. I'm gonna turn the heat on to high, and then we're gonna close it. When it's bring to the broil, we're gonna taste it, and then we're gonna season it. Oh, now it's boil. This is your last chance to taste it and season it before you seal the deal. So we're gonna taste it. Ooh, it's really good. But keep in mind, the veggie is gonna release more juice. So you want it to be a little bit heavier taste than it is right now. So later, when it releases more juice, it will be just right. Oh my goodness, this is done. It smells so good. All that sweat, all that chopping and slapping, it's time to reward yourself. Let's turn the heat off and take a look at this. Royal lion's head. Oh. Oh, it smells so good. Remember when we complained about my mom making it for 30 days, every day? But now when you moved away, this is the flavor, the smell that you miss the most. I cannot wait. I just have to give it a try. Oh, look how soft they are. They're just perfectly cooked. Mmm! Mmm! Oh! So flavorful! Sucked in all the juice of the meat, the sweetness of the veggie. Oh my Buddha! Mm. Now the real test is the meatball. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine a meatball melt in your mouth but you still like get that texture? I know it's impossible to believe it. That's called Mission Impossible. That's called magic. Mm. It's so good. I know it's hard, I know it seems like it takes a lot of kung fu to do it, but I tell you, this is so worth every bit of your effort. You have to give it a try. You're probably drooling now, right? Because the food looks so good. Please like and subscribe for more amazing yummy food. Also, check out my website at chachasprintum.com.